Hey everyone, there's still some issues. Some people that are unmuted. I'm just trying to come out here then. Okay, good evening everyone. And welcome to, the, to tonight's uh, 41 Club Connect event. Uh, apologies I've muted you all. Uh, that's just so that you can hear me and our speaker this evening. Yeah, I can't want to move here because I hear mm -hmm. yours. There's still, some of, you, there's still some of you are not muted. That's yeah. always... Peter, you're muted. Peter, you're muted now. You're muted. Sorry, I'll start again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so welcome uh, everyone and uh, good evening. Uh, apologies, I've muted you all tonight. Our speaker will be taking us a trip down memory lane for those of us who can remember what a holiday is. Uh, sometime we took uh, since we last took those. Uh, Jamie Radland uh, works for Fred Olsen Cruise Lines and uh, with whom, of course, 41 Club have a close relationship and you'll hear more about that. Um, if you do have any questions during the evening, can you please submit these using the chat facility uh, and these will be put to the speaker on your behalf. Um, so if you are all sitting comfortably uh, with a beverage of your choice alongside you, uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to hand you over to our uh, national president, if I can find him on here. Peter Good. Um, so I will hand over to Peter. Thanks very much, Peter. Uh, and thanks very much for kindly stepping in at short notice tonight to take over from Mark. You're on mute. Pete, you're on mute. You're on mute, Peter. Start again then. Thanks, thanks a lot, Peter, for stepping in tonight to take over from Mark, who's at work. Uh, well, if you call going up a church tower, tasting food work, nice job if you can get it. Um, but anyway, um, it's nice to see you all again tonight on our regular connects. Um, we've got the holiday weather now, and hopefully we can show you a bit of some uh, holiday cruising tonight to get you in the mood for when we can start again. I'll now hand over to Don, who's going to give you uh, a preview of what's coming up in the next few weeks and what, what's going to be happening. Um, so over to you, Don, now. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Well, welcome to hopefully a lot of new faces tonight as well, because this is the first time that we held it on a Wednesday night rather than a Thursday night. And this was part of the feedback we were getting from club members who, um, who continuously were missing and not able to join live on a Thursday night. So from now until, uh, certainly until uh, September or so anyway, we're going to have our meetings just on the Wednesday nights, it looks like. Um, in terms of our meeting next week, we've got a slight change of plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to notify you of what's happening in the next newsletter because we're scaling our meetings back to having one or two meetings a month over the summer months. We're putting a new programme together for you at the moment and you can read all about it in next week's uh, newsletter. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Steve James to uh, present this evening's speaker to you. Over to you, Steve. Thanks, John. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm really delighted to welcome Jamie from Fred Olsen Cruise Lines tonight. As, as Peter started off, um, we have a great deal with Fred Olsen. Um, they are our major um, affinity deal partner between 41 Club and Tangent. And we are also one of their top 10 associations partners in the UK. Jamie is an actual expert on the world of cruising with Fred Olsen, having started in 2001 on Boudicca as a cruise host and acting deputy cruise director, then moved on to the Balmoral in 2012 and in 2013 moved to Braemar where in 2014 he became the cruise director. 2015 he swapped his sea legs um, for a desk job, went into the reservations team and more recently in 2019 became the group's affinity account manager. Um, without further ado, over to you, Jamie. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, lovely introduction there, so thank you very much. And uh, first of all, thank you everybody to, uh, for your valuable time here. I'll try not to take up too much of your time. Uh, a bit of sharing our scheme, so lots to get through, uh, through tonight. As Steve mentioned, I joined Fred Olsen Cruise Lines it wasn't 2001, Steve, I warn you. I was only 11 back then. Um, but it was uh, 2011 uh, that I joined Ferrell Cruise Lines uh, on my 21st 
birthday it was indeed. And that was actually the first time you could uh, you could then go and work on board um, on board ships back in 2011. So I couldn't wait to get started. I've been on cruising before with Fred Olsen. And um, yeah, this was my opportunity to shine. I thought, initially thought I would only go on there for a year or so, uh, being 21, traveling the world, seeing the sights, and uh, hopefully making a bit of money along the way. Um, but little did I know that those uh, those 12 months would quickly turn into into three and a half years, um, and in a really eventful three and a half years um, that I spent working on board. Um, in that time, I actually met my wife as well, and that is the only reason why I uh, actually left working on board. I would have stayed on board. I've probably still been on there um, way back when I had hair, and I've lost it now because of all my hair working on board. Um, but yeah, great times and some uh, some great stories to, to share with you all. Um, but I'm going to actually save those until we can actually all be together and we can have a bit of a laugh and I can see everybody's faces. So tonight is purely about, um, more about Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, what we've been doing in the past 15 months, which is... Uh, not a lot of sailing and um, yeah we'll talk about uh, sort of the highlights our recently launched cruises of 2022-23 uh, are back in the water plans for this summer and um, as Steve mentioned the uh, the generous offers that we we have available for 41 club members and also tangent members as well so let me first of all share my screen and apologies if I have to uh, dart out at any given time um, our, our recent newborn, we have a newborn in the house, he's only eight weeks old, so if, uh, if I'm done with a crying baby, I will, uh, I'll be back with you as soon as I can, I promise. So yeah, that's, that's my journey, Steve's already mentioned it, from 2011 all the way through to now, so just uh, nearly nearly 10 years with the company now, and um, I did have a cruise stint, so I don't know if anyone's cruised with them before, very, very different to what Fred Olsen Cruise Lines have to offer, and hopefully we'll be going through that a bit later on this evening. So as I mentioned, 15 months of no sailing. Um, wow, it's uh, a lot's happened in those 15 months. And um, it's probably, well, it is definitely easily the, uh, the most challenging time here at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines since World War II, actually. Um, so way back when. Way back when. So yes, so um, so first of all, we're going to take you back to the, uh, the 13th of March. Down the width is low, it says, that's why we're getting the charity. Um, sorry, yes, so, um, so yes, we're taking you back to, uh, to the 13th of March 2020. And we made a difficult decision to cancel all cruises up until the end of May 2020. Um, now, if we'd have only known uh, that we'd be actually uh, all uh, 12 months down further than the line and still no sailing. But yeah, we were one of the brave ones in actual fact. A lot of the other cruise lines just cancelled for two weeks and four weeks and uh, back in March said, you know what, we'll be back before you know it. Um, we, we pushed it back to the end of May. Thought, you know, that'll give us a bit of time. Um, yeah, <laughs> 15 months later, we are still here. Um, but in the words of Churchill, nev never let a good crisis go to waste. And that's exactly what we have done uh, with the purchase of, uh, of two lovely new ships uh, since the pandemic started. And we purchased them back in June. They arrived into Babcock in Rosyth, where the ships are now stationed. And um, yeah, there's loads of opportunities for us available with these two new ships. And, and our guests as well, but I will be talking through that a bit uh, a bit later on indeed. So what about our, our other ships? Well, as I mentioned, they've been, they've been stationed in Babcock. Um, with, the process is we have three of our ships that are in cold layup operations, which basically means if you were to turn your car off and that would be cold layup, you, you simply don't have any electricity, any running water or anything like that on board these ships. Um, but what we do have is we have the Balmoral, which acts as a mothership. So everything else is plugged into that. So the water would come from the Balmoral, the fresh water would come from the Balmoral. The electricity would be using the Balmoral. So uh, really, really interesting. And uh, yeah, I, I certainly don't know enough of, about that. Um, and I'd have to probably get one of my cruise technicians to talk you through it. But absolutely incredible um, because in, you know, in just over a month's time, we're going to have to start the engines on, on one of these ships. And it's going to be really interesting to see because you can't imagine, like I say, turning off your car for 15 months and then hoping that the battery doesn't bonk out. 
Um, so as I mentioned, they've, they've been in Babcock in Recife for the last 15 months, and um, the, the Balmoral has been accommodating all the crew which have actually stayed on board and have been working on the two recent ships, trying to get them up to scratch in the Fred Olsen way. Um, and um, the head office staff, so the head office staff have been working from home ever since. This is where you, you find me this evening at, at home, as many of you are. Um, so yeah, so we've been here for, since the last 15 months without sailing. Um, so you could say it's probably been uh, been tough, which probably is an understatement to put it mildly. Um, however, we are still here, and uh, I'm going to talk about things positively in a, in a positive manner tonight because the sun's out and I'm feeling very, very, very positive indeed. So um, this is the main reason why we're here today. We're going to be discussing all things 2022, 23. Don't worry, we'll be discussing cruises um, for 21 as well because we haven't forgotten about it. We are still cruising this year and more on that later. Um, but this is the main part, the main focus of today's presentation. So some of the highlights that we'll, uh, we'll be discussing today, and um, we'll be uh, we'll starting off with the Frelson difference and what's so special um, that you hear me say about the Boletta and the Borealis. Um, we're getting a sneak peek at getting them ready. Reasons to uh, reason to cr uh, to cruise with us, of course, and you know, not P&O and not not celebrity and not the likes. What what, what makes us stand out? Don't worry, we'll discuss that. All things Fred Olsen. Um, and then the new cruises, so close to home, regional departures, handcrafted highlights, uh, very special world cruise indeed. Um, our launch offer, our back in the water this July. And lastly, as Steve mentioned at the start of the presentation, our generous members offers and also a very, very special group cruise as well. So let's, uh, let's kick things off then. Let's start off with our, our family members. Now, this is a really, really exciting time here at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines because it's actually been um, well over 10 years since we last introduced a new ship into the fleet. And that was the Balmoral way back in 2008. Uh, and you could say, like us, we've, uh, we've introduced two, two at once. So, uh, so yeah, the, the Boletta, and the Boletta is going to be the, uh, the one to kick us off. As you can see here, with a beautiful artist impression of in her new colours. Um, so uh, she can hold uh, just over 1,300 guests. Now, Reynolds are much, much smaller than the, uh, than the larger lines. Having worked with Celebrity, obviously we have many more ships, but you know, the average accommodation there is sort of 4,500 upwards, whereas um, all of our ships actually hold either just over 1,300, but all of them hold less than 1,400 guests. Jamie, sorry, to, yeah, so you need to share your screen, sorry. You're, you're, you're not sharing your screen, we can't see your screen at the moment. Oh, okay, thank you. We're viewing Neil's new Neil's screen for a moment. Uh, here we go. Sorry about that. There we go. Can you see that there? No. Not yet. Oh, okay. Hold on two seconds. Let me just bring this up two seconds. Uh, Sorry, Pete, Pete, Peter, someone called Neil is showing a screen at the moment. That's it. Neil. And now uh, Jim's sharing his screen. Well, so can I ask anybody who's sharing their screen to stop sharing their screen, please, and let Jamie share his screen. So I'm going to, I'll do one at a time. Let, let me turn that off. Bye. I just okay, right now. I'm gonna you should uh, so you can now share your screen, Jamie. Lovely, thank you very much. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> there you go, that's better. Lovely, can you see that there? Yeah, perfect. Uh, there you go. Sorry about that. Thank you very much for <laughs> bringing it up. Um, so yes, so, uh, so first of all, here is Valletta. Um, so she is our flagship, and um, she holds just over 1,300 guests uh, with 690 cabins. Um, and the, uh, the Valletta will be operating out of Dover, Tilbury, Southampton uh, for, uh, for 2022. So serving our guests uh, from the south. 
And then her sister ship here, the, uh, the Borealis. So also here with an artist impression, um, looking very beautiful in the stunning port of Eidfjord. Um, again, she, she holds just over 1,300 guests and has uh, slightly more cabins than her sister at 702. Um, and uh, for next year and the year after, and also for this year, she'll be sailing out of Liverpool. Now, as I mentioned, um, we'll, there are many benefits of these new ships, and we will be discussing them throughout the, today's presentation. Um, but before we do, um, I just wanted to, uh, to discuss uh, our current ship, our current ships, shall I say, joining our rest of our fleet. So here we have the beautiful Balmoral, again, uh, carrying just over 1,300, about 1,350 uh, or just under. And um, the, the beauty of the Balmoral is she has a really uh, a, a smaller size, which allows her to actually sail right up the, uh, the River Seine, uh, or for an example, uh, to, uh, to easily navigate the Kiel Canal. And I say easily, she is actually one of the largest ships to be able to transit um, the, uh, the canal. So, um, so yeah, so that, that's a really, you know, a, a key piece for any guests who are looking to do that type of cruise, to cruise through the Kiel Canal. And, and having worked on board and, um, and been on the bridge, um, it's the only time where the captain's actually not in charge of the ship. We have a, a pilot come on board and it's, um, yeah, it's uh, really, really interesting because it, things get very, very tight indeed. Um, and the Balmoral uh, will be operating out of Newcastle, Dover, Southampton and Portsmouth for 2022. And lastly, the uh, completing our lineup and not forgetting the wonderful and the smallest ship and, uh, and my personal favourite, um, having actually worked on board as a cruise director um, for just over what just under a year and a half, um, is the uh, the Braemar. Now the Braemar is very different to the other three actually, and um, she is she is that bit smaller. She holds nine hundred guests, um, but the huge benefit for the uh, the Braemar, as you can see from this stunning photo is uh, she has a really shallow draft and, uh, and her size. Uh, and with such, she is actually the largest ship. She's a groundbreaker. She's actually in the uh, Guinness Book of uh, Records. And um, she's the largest ship to be able to actually transit the Corinth Canal, as you can see from this photo here. Um, I really wish I was on board for that. I wasn't, unfortunately. I've, I've retired from my, from my ship side of things that time. Um, but apparently guests can actually touch the, uh, touch the trees as they're sailing past and touch the sides. So, yeah, and there was only one captain out of the uh, out of the eight captains that actually agreed to do it. So uh, uh, it's definitely mad, but it worked and it was fantastic. And uh, we've got many planned for, for next year as well. Um, and also because she's so small, she it allows her to tuck into close to destinations. So, um, so for an example, uh, St. Petersburg, your brain can actually sail, um, sail several miles um, all the way through into uh, in, into the town center itself, really, rather than a typical cruise port. Um, so for much larger ships, even the bat, even the bat more slightly larger, um, you're talking about a 45 minutes or an hour and a half coach journey into the heart of St. Petersburg, whereas, whereas Braemar docks more or less straight there. Same as Seville going up the Guadalupe River um, or, you know, all the way up through to, uh, through, through to Bordeaux in the River Seine. Um, and uh, for, for, for next year, she's not due to join us until next year again. Um, so she'll be uh, operating out of Rosyth actually, and uh, as well as a fly cruising uh, program in and out of Havana and also the Mediterranean for the current canal. So that's the uh, that's the current ship, uh, the current fleet, should I say? But let's go back on to the new ships and and you know why the benefits? Why do you purchase two new ships? So um, there's really so many benefits to these uh, to these new ships, the Valletta and the Borealis. And um, first of all, the main thing that really jumps out for me. Uh, is the speed of the ships. Um, so hopefully some people uh, may know their uh, nautical terms, um, where basically the speed in which the, the Balletta and the Borealis can actually sail, they can actually just sail just over 24 knots, um, which is roughly eight knots quicker than the Balmoral. Um, so that's, that's staggering, that's, that, that's huge, and that, and that actually makes them two of the quickest ships afloat um, currently on the seven seas. Um, so with that, it allows us to take into much more sort of amazing and fresh and new itineraries in a, in a much shorter space of time. So, for instance, cruise, cruising the Amalfi Coast in 15 nights um, or cruising in the, around the world in 80 days. Um, I will bring more on that very, very shortly indeed, I promise. Um, but also the gross tonnage of the new vessels as well. Again, that, that really jumps out. Um, so roughly around 62,000 tonnes. Um, which make them much larger than the Balmoral at 43,000 tonnes, 
But again, they have a similar size capacity with all ships just over 1,300 guests. Now, it, of course, allows us much more space throughout the ships and, uh, and much more space per uh, guest as well, which is really, really key. Um, and as you can see from these photos as well, they, have a, they, they both have an all-weather pool with a retractable roof. And uh, both have some, have some great um, original artwork and premium decor as well. Not only that, um, they also have um, more restaurants, bar lounges, um, as well as more dedicated meeting spaces um, for groups as well. So if you're potentially looking to arrange uh, or escort a group cruise for your members um, or your friends and family, um, then these make them the ideal ships to, to do so. And we will be discussing that group cruise, as I mentioned, for the 41 Club a bit later on. Um, there's also something that really excites me. There's also an exciting culinary um, demonstration theatre and uh, a more suites with balconies on board as well. And lastly, um, and uh, probably the, uh, the three things that I'm most looking forward to uh, are these photos here, really. Um, starting off with the two-tier main theatre restaurant. Um, now, if any guest has, has been on board with ourselves before, you would have noticed that primarily we, we have 6.15 and 8.30 dining. And, um, and what the, uh, the two-tier two -tier theatre, uh, sorry, main restaurant allows us to do is actually operate an open seating dining for the first time ever. So if anyone's cruised with Celebrity Cruise Lines, P&O, so, you know, to name a few without, uh, you know, <laughs> with, uh, we're just naming a few, um, they, they, they all operate the Freedom Dining and it, it comes up time and time again. It's a negative. Why don't you offer Freedom Dining? Well, simply we haven't got the capacity to. But we have on these ships with the two tier um, restaurants, so that's that's fantastic. That's something we're really excited about, um, and also the evening in entertainment as well. And again, anyone been on board and enjoyed the entertainment um, with a classic two tier theatre really makes you feel like you're in the West End or or Broadway, or uh, you know, it's um, you know, I haven't actually been on board, but I've seen some fantastic pictures, and I can't wait to actually watch an even entertainment. Having been an entertainer myself and worked as a cruise director. And lastly, um, the spa and a, a wonder hydrotherapy pool, uh, more treatment rooms. Um, yeah, very much looking forward to that. And I must admit, the time massages on board uh, are fantastic. So uh, yeah, definitely recommend one of those. So what have they been getting up to since you know they joined our service? Like I mentioned, we purchased them uh, way back in sort of June, July time. They've been in our service now since September, having sailed across. Um, so what we've we been doing with them all this time? Well, I would love to say they've been cruising, but obviously they haven't because we've been here for 15 months now and we haven't set sail. Um, but it's allowed us to give them the Fred Olsen spruce that we all know and love. And uh, you can see here the famous Fred Olsen red flag um, with the, uh, you know, the, the, the famous flag on all of our funnels. Um, and also our designers have been updating many of the cabins and suites on board. I keep seeing carpets being thrown out, new carpets being replaced. They're really starting to look like a Fred Olsen ship now. Um, and we, you know, we are family owned. So Mr. Olsen himself, Fred Olsen Jr. Um, has been keeping a really keen eye um, to ensure that the details are just right, um, but, you know, to make sure that our guests will know that they are a Fred Olsen product. And here you can see um, a, a selection of mood boards as well. And um, as I mentioned, Frelsa Jr. is really heavily involved with making sure that um, Boletto and Borealis are made uh, part of the fleet in, in our true signature style. You can see with the sort of squirrely carpets there that we're really, really famous for. Um, and it's really, really, a, 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 you know, attention to detail. Um, and, and they're making sure that they are getting the same, really. Um, there will also be some, uh, some new dining venues, including one inspired by Fred Olsen's renewable uh, commercial forest estate, which is in Scotland. Um, so, yeah, we can't, that's as much as I can share at this moment in time, but they are really starting to look the picture now. So um, just before we start this um, presentation, um, uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, members of the 41 Club just, just asked, you know, it might be quite nice to mention about why go on a Fred Olsen cruise and, and like the, you know, the p &O, the Celebrity, the Royal Caribbean, the ships that you may have heard of are that bit heavier out there in the market. Um, well, hopefully I'm going to discuss that with you uh, this evening. So, so why go on a Fred Olsen cruise? Um, this is great because the first part of the presentation really speaks for itself on this, and it, it, it is smaller ships. I've mentioned about the Brain Mill with the Corinth Canal, I've mentioned about the Moral with the Kiel Canal. Um, but it, it, you know, it, it, 
what it means is that our, the bigger ships simply cannot reach those destinations. Um, it also means fewer guests for our for our for our crew. It, it allows us to offer a more personal and friendly service, which for me, having worked on board, um, like I mentioned, for three and a half years, is the number one reason I would recommend anyone to us. Our amazing staff um, on board remember your name, your favorite drink, and treat you honestly as a member of the Fred Olson family from the day you step on board. It's like no other cruise line. Having worked for others, I won't say celebrity, but I did work for them, um, and having the knowledge of friends that have worked for other uh, the cruise lines before um you know it's, it's something that doesn't happen that you know we, we have a saying you're not a number you are a member of the family you really are and that's that's all down to the crew um and also you know just to go back on the size contrast as well so each of our ships carry at least five times fewer guests than the largest cruise ship at capacity Number two, um, so why Fred? Number two, uh, and the reason for this one is more UK departure ports um, than any other cruise line within the UK. Um, so for 2022-23, we've actually added on uh, London Tilbury, um, Belfast, and um, and Portsmouth as well. So we've now got eight UK departure ports. So um, so again, giving giving the guests all the options um, to be able to cruise within the UK. Next up is our, our cruisers, that, which are, uh, are closer to home. And um, we, we try to uh, always plan near and far, um, like our world, world cruisers, which, which are actually selling like hotcakes. I will come on to that very, very soon indeed. Um, but we actually, uh, we actually plan for the world as it is. Um, so our new itineraries include um, much more options to cruise around the British Isles. And there's also plenty of uh, shorter cruises on offer as well. And, uh, but meanwhile, we make sure they all have the best part of Fred and Cruise, which is sea days, scenic cruising, and of course, interesting ports of call. And um, as I mentioned, there's so many reasons for, for me to recommend, but I am limited to time. Um, so here's a final one. And um, the Olsen family have actually been in the business now for over 170 years um, with, with maritime history. And uh, so it's fair to say that they've seen a, a fair few things in their time. A couple of world wars, current pandemic and of course we're still here we're into our fifth generation now um, so family owned business and our heritage and experience really makes us stand out as you can see we've uh, we've also won a fair number of awards as well so even in this last year by treating our customers with fairness and respect we've been recognized for our efforts and uh and i actually wanted to highlight here the uh, the award at the bottom which is the uk customer experience award um, which we actually won due to our uh, fantastic virtual cruising program um, that we currently have and continue to offer our guests whilst we've been able to, to, to cruise um, this moment in time. Again, as, as I mentioned just before this presentation started, um, I am one, part of the team that offer um, a, daily or a weekly quiz to our members and um, yeah, we'll pop the link in there. Um, so just hit, us, hit a like on Facebook or Fred Olsen Cruise Lines and every Thursday at midday we bring you um, a new and enjoyable quiz, an interactive quiz for about half an hour. Okay, so on to our journey planning. And um, so we're nearly there. We're going to go through some of the highlights, some of the cruises for 2022, 23. Uh, but just before I, I, I take you on that journey, um, I wanted to go into a bit of a sort of planning program because it starts from scratch each and every year. And the reason why it starts from scratch each and every year is because we simply look at what our guests are after and um, you know what 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 does it make them tick what do they want to get from going on board so this like i mentioned starts from scratch each and every year so um we've done a huge uh, piece of uh, audience research into cruising and cruises here back in 2019 and we found that the reasons for going cruising are quite distinct especially amongst our audience uh, we found three key elements, which were pure relaxation. So, for instance, uh, you know, a cruise around the Mediterranean or the Caribbean, uh, a journey. So, Spitsbergen, as you can see here, Greenland or Iceland, and and also cultural. You know, a bit of it, uh, culture and a bit of exploration. So, maybe uh, revisiting Prussia, for an example. Uh, we also found that it is very important that the same people would book different cruises uh, for different reasons. So, making sure that we don't pigeonhole that one guest into that one category. And as I mentioned, everything we do is tailored for them. So um, we make sure it's not what makes our lives easier. And trust me, I'd love to love it to be that way. But no, it's simply what our guests know and love and want. And that's what we tailor it to do. 
And it starts, it starts here. Um, as you can see, a wonderful team here. Our, uh, our award-winning um, itineraries are Martin and Claire. So we go we go guest feedback, we go on tour experiences, calendar, seasonal events, small ship benefits, um, and it all gets filtered in. And, um, you know, our research team and experience has, has shown, um, and, it, you know, our guests want that. And um, some, some may say that a lot of cruise lines do seven-day mid-cruises that go round and round and pick up guests, guests each and every week uh, to see the same things. That's simply not us. As I mentioned, we, 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 we start from scratch each and every year and it's all tailored to our guests. So very nearly there, very nearly looking at some of the cruises on offer. Um, we, um, we, we have our guest launch offer. So every time we launch a new um, itinerary, or sorry, new program um, this year for 2022-23, we have the option, again, um, giving the guests what they want, an option of either onboard spend or a complimentary joint package. Um, and that's on the majority of our 2022-2023 sailings. And in actual fact, for the group cruise that we'll discuss later, all members of the 41 Club, um, you can actually, uh, admittedly, you have to book by the end of this month. So no, no hurry and no rush. Um, but you can in, in, indeed benefit from that as well on your group cruise. So at a glance, um, and um, because I can't go through all of the 126 cruises with you, um, this is at a glance, and we will go into sort of two or three of the different sort of categories of the cruises. So um, as I mentioned, 126 cruises ranging from three to 101 nights, 272 different ports of call, 119 areas of scenic cruising, 82 countries, and the one that always stands out for me, I don't know how they do it, 15 maiden calls. Um, it's just incredible how they keep rolling out these maiden calls each and every year. So, uh, this is the reason why we're here with 2022-23 uh, cruise highlights. And we're going to start closer to home. We're going to start with the UK uh, cruises as well. So I've just, just literally hand-selected a few of these and I'll, I'll quickly run through them as well. Um, so for this particular one, um, it's, uh, it's a lovely cruise touring the scenic island. Um, and um, it was actually one of my, one of my favourite cruises, actually, sailing around the UK. And, and we used to have so many guests come on board and think, oh, I'll just do it for a, for a short vacation or, or get away. And, you know, they couldn't do something else. So they decided to do a UK cruise. And the number of times we used to get the best feedback on these cruises was, was unbelievable. And we've got some beautiful places around our UK islands. It's, it's absolutely stunning. And uh, as you can see from this one here, um, so four ports of call around Ireland, loads of scenic cruising, including Glacial Caleri, which I am actually told is a fjord in Ireland. Yeah, fjord in Ireland. Apparently they do exist. Um, um, Lauswelly as well, um, both of which uh, are only reached by our smaller ships. Next up, the remote isles and lots of Scotland. Um, uh, what a beautiful country it is indeed. I've hired uh, a car before and driven it all the way up through Scotland and absolutely loved it. But this is a great way to do it in, in such a short space of time. Um, either departing from Liverpool or Belfast on Borealis, cruising the remote isles and lots of Scotland in June. Um, as I mentioned, a lovely itinerary and a great way to explore Scotland. And there's so much to see on this cruise, including Fingal's Cave, uh, Mullochintyre and the Dwarf Castle, um, as well as a staggering five ports of call in just eight nights. And lastly for the UK, it is the Devon and Cornwall one, probably my favourite out of the three. Um, and uh, this one's on board the, uh, the Braemar, uh, sailing from Southampton. Again, mentioning the Braemar size, um, it allows her to dock within a mile um, of the city centre of both ports of call. Um, and this, uh, this cruise not only features Plymouth and Falmouth, um, you know, we, we cruise the, the beautiful uh, Channel Islands as well. So really nice cruise in, in, in five nights from Southampton. So what other short, uh, short options do we have? Uh, well, you'd be surprised at actually how far we can get in a short period of time, as I mentioned, with our two new ships. And, uh, and a couple of those are going to be highlighted in this, uh, in this next part of the presentation. So probably one of the first cruises that jumps to mind when anyone mentions Fred Olsen is Norway. It's not simply because Fred Olsen is Norwegian and owns areas in Norway and, 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 and islands within Norway, but purely because of our size and our captains. They know the waters like nobody else. 
So offering New York Norwegian cruises like no other company, as I mentioned. And here we have a perfect five-night cruise to Norway. Um, due to this cruise actually departing from Newcastle, you're in the heart of scenic cruising from day one. Um, even for me, I live in, in Ipswich, well, close to Ipswich in the uh, East Anglia and Suffolk. Um, even for me, you know, sort of five and a half, six hour drive up into Newcastle, it's still worth it because you, you skip that day of sailing all the way up to Newcastle that you'd get. And straight away from Newcastle, you know, more or less within sort of 24 to 36 hours, you're in the heart of, the heart of the, you know, the ports of call already. Um, and in this particular one, you cruise past Hardangerfjord whilst also calling into a fishing port of, uh, of Bergen and one of my favourites, which is the Stunning Eyefjord. And next up is Discovery Normandy. Now, this lovely Normandy sail, uh, sailing sails out of uh, Southampton and for five nights again. Um, and it allows you uh, the opportunity to, uh, to sail through the scenic um, uh, Seine River. Um, and again, three ports of call all in five nights. It's, it's remarkable. Um, and it really is perfect for any guests who, who probably haven't actually experienced cruising. I know we've got some people on here who haven't actually cruised with, uh, or bothered, uh, not bothered, but wanted to cruise but don't know an awful lot about it, but wanted to know a bit more. Uh, if you know if I was to recommend a cruise, this would be a perfect one. Obviously, if you live near South London, ideal. Um, but even if not, it's worth traveling a few hours down to the, down to the port because this really you know, brings you three ports of call in five nights, it cruises the stunning Seine River and, um, you know, Rouen and Honfleur, a beautiful port of call indeed. And, uh, and lastly, completely our short breaks, is the Danish city break. Um, and uh, the, the Danes probably welcome you um, like nobody else. Um, I was there for the main port of call into Aalborg and they gave you a, a true Viking style um, sort of welcome onto the shoreside. And, um, and in actual fact, they were giving out complimentary hot dogs as well, which is, which is terrific for the crew. Um, but yeah, they've, they've been doing it ever since. And we absolutely love their market, especially Allborg. And uh, you have the stunning Copenhagen as well, which is probably, uh, I think it's actually in the top five of our most highly rated um, ports or destinations. And again, just before Christmas as well. So, uh, you know, to have that experience, um, to experience those Danish Christmas markets is, um, is, is perfect. So slightly further afield, so I just mentioned that, you know, the, the, the couple of cruises that obviously, or, or a few cruises within the UK or a slightly further afield in terms of the short breaks, but this is slightly further afield. And this one here, beautiful, beautiful photo, as you can see, it's um, absolutely stunning. And again, this one from either from Liverpool or Belfast, um, it goes to the Faroes in just six nights. Um, so with loads and loads and loads of uh, scenic cruising, here is a stunning picture of Yasala Dala. Sorry about my pronunciation. As you can see, I haven't done it for a while of uh, having to present on board. Um, but you, you will also see some, some fantastic wildlife on this cruise, I'm sure you, um, you can see there all of, all of the highlights there. I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce some of those, but Goose Valley, that's what it's uh, Gassan Dala is, uh, is pronounced for. So, uh, so yeah, absolutely stunning photo and a stunning cruise in just six nights. And, uh, and the next one, my, my wife's favourite um, favorite cruise, actually, this one's Wales and Waterfalls and Geysers of, of Iceland and um, another Liverpool departure. Um, and again, another one that actually benefits from the speed of our new ships on this one on the, uh, on the Borealis. And normally when we go to Iceland, it's sort of 12, 13, 14, 15 nights even. Um, but this one, we can, we can do it in 10 nights. And again, we don't skip out on most ports of call. Um, so you've got the uh, you know five ports of call, plenty of scenic cruising, and along with the possibility of hopefully seeing some whales as well. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, I remember one one um, sailing back from a curry uh, at the top right hand side of that map there, sailing back down, um, just just calling into port, should I say? Sorry, and I was on the bridge being ready for the morning announcement, and this literally just before we start to cruise into the actual port itself. I don't know how I was so close into shore. This whale just, oh, it was incredible. The, the, one of the best experiences of my life, obviously, you know, apart from getting married and also the birth of my son, that's certainly up there. You know, this whale just jumped out and splashed. It was incredible. So, you know, there is the opportunity to see the whales at that time of year. And, um, yeah, I, I actually on, the, on this cruise, I'm actually booked on the identical cruise for this year. So I'm due to go in, in November for my wife's birthday, along with the little one. And uh, again, we benefit from the uh, from the Valletta speed here. Just in 15 nights, it allows us to uh, to not only sail the ancient walls of Malta, 
But, but it also allows us to, to have an overnight stay to experience Valletta um, at night time. Um, and again, if anyone's been to, to Valletta in Malta, as this picture here, um, it doesn't really do it justice because at night it really comes alive and the lights and, the, you know, the old walls and it just is it's, it's absolutely stunning. So it allows us for an overnight there um, and along with some beautiful ports of forward there as well. So, um, so one certainly not to be missed there. And that's from one of our new ports of call in Tilbury. And, uh, and lastly, for, for this section of the presentation is Croatia and Italy. Um, and I keep saying it's one of my favourite cruises. This one is one of my favourite cruises and for the simple reason of going to Venice. Um, because, you know, the, the sail in and out of Venice is absolutely spectacular. Um, but you also get split Dubrovnik and made in port of call, which is in Gallipoli. Um, so there's so many reasons to, to, to like this cruise. 27 nights, so it is slightly longer. But you can imagine why. I mean, look at the amount of ports of call that we're actually bringing you on this particular sailing. Absolutely remarkable. So one of the other reasons why I wanted to highlight is right place, um, right time. Now, you may have remember or recall me stating earlier on that um, our, our itineraries are, are started from scratch each and every year. And, uh, and for this particular reason, we're going we're to highlight some of these cruises that, that you know, fall into that category. Um, so we've got two cruises on this particular slide and uh, one from the south, from Southampton, and one from the north in Newcastle, but each offering a unique experience to our guests. And that is the Floriard Expo, um, which is a horticultural experience and only happens once every 10 years. Um, it's also actually perfect timing to see the wonderful uh, springtime tulips as well. So again, two uh, uh, five nights, two ports of call, overnight in Amsterdam. What a perfect cruise again for the uh, for the guests who have never experienced cruising before. Uh, this one's my father-in-law's uh, favourite because uh, he's been to the Monaco Grand Prix and he's been on this particular cruise. Absolutely loved it. Um, again, a southern departure for this one, um, sailing from Southampton. Um, and a chance, like I mentioned, to see the F1 in, uh, in, in Monaco. Um, but it's not only that, if you're not a fan uh, uh, of the F1, and, and you can, you know, just sit about in Villa France, there's plenty to do there. Um, but also we've got stunning ports of call, um, like Barcelona, Cairns and Alicante, just to, just to highlight a few as well. And as I mentioned at the start, when I was talking about the Braemar, this cruise here, um, is, a, is an opportunity or record record breaking opportunity, should I say, to go in transit the Corinth Canal on the largest ship able to do so. Um, it's certainly on my bucket list. I really, really want to do this one. Um, and this particular cruise is a fly cruise option where you can either fly out of London or Manchester. Um, and um, just just for this one here, 10 nights is all. So you just fly out in, in and out of Valletta and Malta out of 10 nights and cruise around the, uh, the you know, the ancient Greece. And, uh, and transit the Corinth Canal as well. Now, you may recall, right at the start of the presentation, I mentioned an extraordinary adventure, where I mentioned around the world in 80 days. And um, Don and Steve both made sure that I really, really highlighted this particular cruise. And uh, well, here's, here's, here's the reason why, basically. Around the world in 80 days. So following in the footsteps of Phileas Falk himself, 150 years after the book was released. Um, now, this cruise has actually already had 800 guests. Yes, 800 guests book on. Doesn't sail until 2023 and has only been on sale since March this year. Absolutely extraordinary. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> get, book, get, get putting, booking that one straight away. <laughs> and uh, this, this map, um, look at this, you know, from 999, uh, oh, sorry, 999, should I say, 79 nights or 80 days um, with up to 500 pounds on board spend. Um, now, normally, um, normally our cruises actually, our world cruises actually depart around January. And um, this particular world cruise actually departs on the 23rd of February 2023. And there is a really good reason for it. Um, so, departing either Liverpool, uh, sorry, so departing either Southampton mm -hmm. or Liverpool, uh, guests can follow in the footsteps of Phileas Fogg, cruising around the Med through the Suez Canal around India, into Singapore, then Hong Kong, and arriving into Japan for the cherry blossom. Um, now, this is the actual particular reason why it departs later in the year, to see the full cherry blossom um, into Japan. The cruise then continues back through to Hawaii, San Francisco, the Caribbean, the Azores, finally back into Southampton, all in 80 days. Again, the benefit of the speed of the Borealis, we're the first cruise ship to actually produce this, this cruise around the world in 80 days. 
Um, for our Liverpool guests, if, our, if anyone is on here who is sort of Liverpool would be their closest destination, don't fear the cruise stops back in Southampton, but then we would have a coach that would take you back up to Liverpool. And also uh, one of the reasons why we actually set sail later on for that particular cruise is Safaga, this, this picture here. And um, it actually allows guests to book tours to Luxor and to visit 100 years after Tutankhamun's tomb was officially opened. As I mentioned, just this, this picture here with the uh, with a stunning, uh, stunning cherry blossom. Um, I'm certainly, certainly would love to get booked. I, I can't see uh, my boss allowing me 80 days off to, to, to cruise around the world. But I have been very, uh, very fortunate enough to having worked on board. I, I, I've sailed around the world and I've done a world cruise for 112 nights, which is absolutely fantastic. But this one here, 80 days, you know, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity. So that's, that's it for the 22-23. Hang on in there with me. We nearly finished the presentation, I promise. Then we'll just do a brief Q&A at the end. Sorry, I can't see any of the comments at the moment, but we will come to those if you have asked a question. Um, Steve has uh, been writing them down and we will come through to those very, very shortly indeed. But before we, uh, before we conclude the presentation, um, obviously we've talk, talked about 2022 and uh, 2023 and all the, you know, all the great cruises that we have on offer. Um, but so what about this year and, and probably the most excited and you probably can hear it in my voice how excited I am is because we actually get back in the water this July yes it is officially happening um, as you can see here from this lovely illustration we are cruising again returning to the seas this summer so with just 33 days left Fred Olsen Cruise Lines is to resume sailing this summer as I mentioned with a host of new welcome back cruising uh, also, a new look fleet um, and an exclusive discount uh, for 40 club, 41 club members that will get commentary very, very shortly indeed. Um, so, yeah, so when the FCO advice was actually lifted against cruising, the first date for cruising this year was the 17th of May. You may have seen, you know, the MSC, uh, Celebrity, um, PO, also Music Start as well. Um, so, many cruise lines actually opted to jump at the opportunity to, uh, to set sail again. However, we uh, here at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, we predict the awful weather in May, um, although the last couple of days haven't been too bad, have they? Um, so we, we pumped for July and we thought, you know what, we'll, we'll wait a few, a few more weeks and then we'll go in for July. And um, that's exactly when we get back. So new ship Borealis, which joined the fleet last summer alongside sister ship and uh, a new, and our new flagship, Valletta, and will actually be the first to set sail on the 5th of July, as I mentioned. Uh, followed by Valletta on the 16th of August, and then followed by Bamal in December. So, uh, so the new Welcome Back sailings um, will be showcasing the best of the, uh, the British islands um, with scenic cruises and those ports of call, which of course feature aboard our smaller ships. Uh, as I mentioned, it's safe to say everyone here at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines after a very, very long 15 months indeed, cannot wait until the, uh, until the 5th of July. I think we'll be uh, opening the uh, bottles of champagne for that one. So what reassurance can our, can our guests, can I, can I give our guests, shall I say, if you're, if you're looking to book one of these cruises? Um, well, the team are working tirelessly on, on what our protocols will, will actually be. And again, if you've seen some of the new ships at sail, um, they, they, they've, they've had an excellent feedback. And, um, you know, we're working tirelessly on what our protocols will be, as, of course, we have to adapt to our new way of cruising. Um, and these, I promise you, will be released very, very shortly indeed, because, you know, we're due to set sail very shortly. Um, however, in the meantime, here is what we can actually currently offer um, for, for peace of mind whilst booking a Fred Olsen cruise. And this is the first option. This is one of the options that we actually first brought out whenever, when, it, when we actually had to uh, actually, unfortunately, um, cancel the cruises. So the first option is, uh, is a 10%. So if your cruise was actually cancelled by ourselves due to COVID, um, we would firstly offer a 10% future cruise voucher for any guests who choose to transfer. But again, there's no rush to make that decision because you have 12 months to make that decision. Um, secondly, if guests actually choose to hold their money with us for up to 24 months, yes, 24 months for two years, um, and then decide not to transfer, so you might sit in it for a while, then not decide to transfer, we will actually give them, uh, give our guests an additional 5% to say thank you for supporting us. And third option, a very, very simple indeed, uh, understandable if you, your cruise has been affected and you can't simply go this year or you you you, you know you it was a special cruise that you booked for next year and it was indeed cancelled uh sorry not for next year because they're not due to go but for this year if it was a, spe a special occasion and it was cancelled then 
very simply, we will give you a refund. Mm -hmm. um, refunds are taking slightly longer than uh, than obviously we would anticipate, and uh, but we are still one of the fastest in terms of giving refunds back to our guests. And then our updated plane sailing guarantee. Um, so this here um, allows our guests to basically transfer the deposit onto any cruise to another choice. Um, all we simply need to know is uh, before your final payment is due, um, we need to know that you'd like to transfer. So if you were booked on for a 20 cents one cruise and you decided that you, you didn't fancy it, you wanted to move, you can do. That's absolutely no problem whatsoever. So we're nearly there. Hang on with me. Um, don't finish your drink just yet. We are nearly there, as I mentioned. Um, but right before we finish, I did mention that there is um, some special offers for 41 club members. And um, yeah, we've, we've seen some amazing um, bookings throughout this pandemic. And um, as Steve mentioned, you are, I actually manage 152 accounts um, within Affinity Partners and 41 club are actually in the top 10. You're at, I think you sit about eighth, actually. I had a look earlier today. So you sit eighth. So thank you to each and every one of you because not only do you get a discount through Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, but by booking a Fred Olsen Cruise, you actually need help the 41 Club as well. So let's discuss that discount. So as you can see here, it is an up to 10% discount. And what I mean by an up to 10% discount, it's a 5% affinity discount through being a 41 Club member and also a 5% Oceans discount um, for those guests who have sailed with us before. And then for those guests who haven't sailed with us before, the 5% affinity discount still applies. All you need to simply do is at the time of booking is simply code, uh, quote the code 41 club and then a five at the end of it, 41 club five. And we will also need your location of your of your branch. That's all we need. So Southampton branch, Walsash branch, Suffolk branch. That's all we need. And then that unlocks your discount as well. And uh, yeah, finally, our group cruise, you can see here, sorry about the small print, I couldn't quite fit it onto uh, <laughs> any, any larger. Um, but yeah, up until the end of this month, we have, um, it is combinable with, uh, with either three drinks package or the onboard spends. You have up until the 30th of June to, uh, to, to uh, get that additional benefit. However, if you can't book by then, no problem at all, um, because you do also have a 10% group discount currently off full fair brochure fair price um, prices are listed just there you also get 75 pound per person free onboard spend and then also a free group drinks party um that the wonderful host which is steve james um will be uh, will, will be um hosting for that particular occasion and that does uh, that that really does conclude the uh, the presentation so thank you ever so much um hopefully we've got a couple of questions here if you haven't i have just popped my my email down there if you have got a shoot i totally understand um so if you wanted to take note my my email address is, is my name so it's jamie.rudland at fred olson um, dot co uk and uh, i will actually be there in cardiff um next year and um i did have a request from from don to to make sure there was a lot of, uh, of, of stories or a day in the life of a cruise captain or what, what my role entailed as, as working as a cruise director. I promise you I will, I will make it more personalised and we'll have a bit of fun along the way when I can actually see you in person. But hopefully that small um, sort of 45 minutes or so has allowed you uh, into a, a sort of world of Fred Olsen and, um, and, and also the 41 Club uh, benefits. So thank you. Okay, thanks, Jamie. Very interesting talk. And, and just picking up on the 41 Club and Tangent um, group booking, I have posted on Facebook this morning and the article that Jamie showed will appear in next week's newsletter. And I know Pauline who from Tangent who's on, I've sent it to her to put out to Tangent members. So I'd encourage you to try and book, ideally before June, because you can offer for free drinks package. I'm pleased to say there's quite a lot of questions, Jamie. So I'll act as the, the question master. And the first one in the chat was from Peter McBride. And that's, what is your favourite cruise destination? Oh, good one. Uh, you probably heard me throughout the presentation say, this is my favourite one, this is my favourite one. Um, but oh, in all fairness, um, for my... Um, for my uh, for my uh, honeymoon, I can think of the word. For my honeymoon, uh, after we shortly got married, we went over to South Africa, and uh, we actually booked on a Fred Olsen cruise. And um, yeah, I don't know if you've ever sailed to South Africa or even been to Cape Town and the likes of Durban. 
absolutely remarkable. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And my other one, if you if you quite like adventure, is the Northern Lights. Is, is sailing up to the Northern Lights and um, sort of going to the Soros Neva um, Ice Hotel where Joanna Lumley done that presentation, bit of husky sled and that sort of thing. And obviously the opportunity to see the Northern Lights are probably those if I had to pick two. There's so many, but if I had to pick two, it'd certainly be those two. Okay. Um, and I haven't asked this person to, to put it in the chat, but it's obviously someone from Wales called David wants to know why there are no Welsh ports on the itinerary. <laughs> Good question. Good question. Um, we, of course, uh, like I mentioned, have the, we actually have eight ports of call and we have the most within the UK. Um, but you are quite right. It, it is something that keeps getting looked at each and every year. Um, and unfortunately, you've, you, you, you've stuck me there. I can't give you an actual answer. Um, maybe I can, I can find out the reason why and I can email Steve and I can get back to you. But, um, but yeah, I haven't, got, I haven't got an actual answer for that. But, um, but yeah, there's plenty there's cruise lines that actually out of Wales, isn't it? Um, I'm, I'm going to ask Asa a number of questions, so I'll take hit all of his in one go. The first one was, what is the staff to guest ratio on the ships? Uh, so roughly, more or less, sort of three to one. Yeah, it's more or less three to one. So in, in some occasions, it has been two to one because obviously it depends. So, um, so if in, I'm just going to take about more just because I don't know the um, the staff to crew ratio at the moment on in terms of the two newer ships um, because I haven't been on board and I haven't seen the stats properly. Um, but the Balmoral, like I mentioned, she can hold about 1325, and we have about 530 crew on there. So actually just between sort of two to one to three to one, two and a half maybe, yeah. And the next question you want to know is, is there live poker and a casino on the board? There's not actually. We have, we have roulette tables, and we also have poker tables, so blackjack tables. Um, sorry, we don't have poker tables. The reason for that is, um, is Mr. Olsen himself, senior, um, well in his 90s now, um, he's, he's really against it, gambling on board. So we're not that style of, uh, of cruising. So I will be honest, if you are looking to sort of gamble on board, maybe not for not for yourself. But we do have um, uh, roulette and, uh, and blackjack. So if you fancy a tipple, then uh, then why not? Or a flutter, shall I say. And, and in terms of the two newer ships, where are they built? That is a very good question. You could be on the spot. You can find out in probably two or three minutes. I'll come back to me on that one, Steve. I'll, uh, I'll be doing right, a bit I'll, of I'll, I'll flag that for Asa. And his final question he wants to know is, are children allowed on the ships? Yes, absolutely. Again, I'll be very honest. Um, you know, a lot of the other ships cater primarily for families. Um, our two new ships have a really nice, actually, children's area. Um, but we, we do have a number of children. We have in, in sort of summer holidays or, or spring holidays and that sort of thing. We do can have to have up to between sort of 50 to 80 um, children on board. But primarily we don't cater for, for you know, for, for children and, and families on board. But there is that option. Yeah, we're certainly not against it. OK. And, and welcome. We actually have the national president of the Netherlands on this evening. And he wants to know where is Boudicca? Um, at the moment, because it's no longer in the fleet, because the former president actually used to work on the ship. Ah, oh, yeah, you and me both, yeah, it's my first, very first ship actually in 2011, so that's why I first worked on board uh, Boudicca. Um, she was actually sold, and at this present moment in time, um, I couldn't actually tell you, originally the, 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 um, uh, we'd be sold Boudicca and Black Watch after purchasing Valletta and Borealis, as, as lovely as Black Watch and Boudicca were, um, they were they were they were getting slightly old, slightly tired, and they they all have expiration dates on them. Unfortunately, you know because they are uh, very very um, very close to my heart, Boudicca, and also Blackwatch. I actually met my wife on the Blackwatch, so both are very close to my heart. And um, it was a sad sad day when we actually sold them there. That we sold them to a Turkish um, sort of flotilla. And that's originally what they were going to be used for. Um, I haven't heard anything prior to that, so uh, at the moment in time we haven't heard anything back. Uh, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and then um, Andy Nation has asked, do you cover the Galapagos Islands? In any we way? don't, unfortunately, no. Um, only selected uh, ships are actually allowed down there. I think, uh, I shouldn't really say this because I work for Ferrelson, but I know Celebrity, I think it was in Infinity Do or some, one of the ships do, but there's very, there isn't many ships that are actually allowed to, to actually sail that close to the Galapagos. Um, it's a cruise that we'd absolutely love to, um, but I think our ships are slightly too large. Um, I might maybe wrong, but um, but 
I know that it's something that they continue to look into, but I think they get keep getting pushed back at. Okay, I've had a question from Steve Sykes. Um, just wanting clarification on the cost of the round the world in 80 days cruise. Yeah, I saw that, and I think you are correct. I think the 999 price um, has actually gone up. Um, let me just, I think from time to time, we operate a live booking system, so the prices can obviously go up and down. And I think what, what's happened is the 999 has actually sold out, because as I mentioned, it has been selling like hotcakes. We've, you know, we've had over 800 guests have actually booked on board now, so we are very limited in terms of, um, of actually accommodation on board. And I think all of the interiors that actually start off at that 999 price have indeed actually been sold. So hence the reason why the, the price has gone up. So yeah, um, I'll make sure I remove that for, for future presentations. But, but yeah, that was certainly the starting price. And um, I know that the interiors at that cost have actually been sold. And, and Brian McNeil wants to know, do you offer any river cruises? And if so, where do you go? We used to. Um, so back, way back in 2016, we purchased Brabant and um, she offered um, sort of Moselle and um, the Rhine and, and Danube rivers. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't really work out for we very we know what we're good at. And that is cruises, cru uh, cruises and boy ocean cruises. Um, and it didn't really work out for us in the past, obviously, unfortunate events of the pandemic. I'd love to say that we still own it, but we don't. We've actually... Uh, we actually, we, we, we didn't actually per fully purchase it. We chartered the ship. Um, so we ended that partnership, unfortunately, at the end of uh, the end of 2020. So we no longer do. Um, I would say we, we won't ever again because it is something that really intrigues us and it's something that really took off. We offered about 18 months of real cruising and it was, works really, really well. Um, so I, I'd be surprised if we don't have that discussion again and potentially look at it. And sorry, Steve, I have just in the meantime been looking and Valletta, um, was uh, was built in 2000 in uh, in, in Italy um, in in Cantieri uh, shipyard, um, and that was the fourth and the last ship um, in Holland America's uh, Rotterdam R class. And I think the letter was uh, was actually in, uh, sorry, Brian Arts was the same. Right, and going back to river cruise, if I remember, we did have a 41 club and tangent river cruise a couple of years back, didn't we? Yes, you are indeed correct. Yeah, I think um, I can't remember who was actually on, on board or who actually hosted it. But yeah, you did. You're right. Yeah, two thousand. Probably just one or two names. I think on the chat on tonight mm. who actually were on that cruise. Yeah. Uh, and then we've had a, a question from Malcolm Fretter asking, "Why is there an obsession with drinks packages nowadays?" <laughs> That's a very good question, actually, because in 2011, when I very first started with the company. Um, we didn't bother with the drinks package. I know a lot of the American cruise lines have brought out drinks packages and the likes. Um, we actually, are, are, are one of the cheapest cruise lines, in, in, in all fairness, to actually offer a drinks package. We offer £19 per person per night, which may sound a lot, but obviously we deal with them um, with in, in pounds sterling. And um, what that allows you to do is unlimited drinks throughout the day. Okay, yes, it's only house branded drinks, but it includes all soft drinks, um, red wine, beers on draft, as well as bottles. So for me, I mean, I'm not a heavy drinker. I do like a tipple here and there. Um, but for me, I'd, I'd quite easily have maybe half a bottle of wine in the evening, maybe a beer or two on deck, and uh, maybe a soft drink here and there. And it's surprising how quickly that 19 pounds is stacked up. Um, but going back to the, uh, the actual original question, I think it's probably something to do with uh, a lot of the sort of American cruise lines that start introducing their drinks package because I know again having worked with celebrity now they offer so many drinks packages un unbelievable we just offer one standard one they used to have uh, children's drinks packages adults drinks packages um house branded um, drinks packages and then upwards to a sort of 90 100 120 um dollars a night so uh, it's a very very different to what we actually offer but at the moment when there's a free one why not take it up <laughs> yeah and we've had a question from David Sparling to ask if our 41 Club discount is retrospective because um, he rebooked from a cancelled cruise. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So if, you, if you've already had that discount, then yes. Um, if you are transferring, then, then yes. Again, if it, if it, we've, we've been a bit more flexible since the pandemic. Originally, if you haven't booked that at the time and then you transfer, unfortunately, it's, it has to be done within that first transaction. 
Um, however, since the pandemic, if it is cancelled by ourselves, then yes, we will we will retrospectively apply that discount. And, and, and Jason has asked a question that he read an article a few years ago that it was actually much feasible and cheaper to go on a cruise than to go into a retirement home. And he wants to know, have you got many guests doing so? I'll tell you what, I will, I will share one story with you of having worked on board the Braemar. So the Braemar is actually originally built for, um, for fly cruising. And, um, and that's exactly what we do with her. We, we set up in the Caribbean from sort of, well, we sail out from about November time. Um, and we then sail back, um, back around March. And we operate fly cruising. Um, used to be out of Barbados for next year and the year after it would be Havana um, because they, they saved our bacon and Steve asked that question so we'll come back to that as well. Um, but we used to have a, a lovely lady um, called Linda, I can't remember her surname now, um, but her first name is Linda, that's all I remember. And um, she, yeah, she was absolutely amazing and basically what she used to do was she used to turn off all her heating, all her electric bills and everything like that. She would turn it all off for those six months, she'd come on board and I think per day it cost her about two pounds per day additional to come on a cruise and sit for six to seven months in the Caribbean. Um, so yeah, no brainer. So yeah, you you read in that article, yeah, you're not wrong. So going around the world for eighty days, you know, you, you probably well, you not necessarily save you money, but you wouldn't be paying that much more. I bet. And, and Neil Kellett wants to know what beers do you have on board. Good question, actually, because we're in the process of updating them. Um, I'm an ale drinker, as you can probably tell from my, uh, my beer belly. Um, but um, so we, we had New, Newcastle Brown Ale. We also had um, Old Speckle Hen at the time. Um, and um, being from Suffolk, being able to, so our head office is based in Ipswich. And hopefully you've all heard of Adams, and that's my favourite drink, um, Adams Broadside. So we actually have a partnership with, with Adams as well. So we've got South Hall. Um, so I think Southall's the only one that we've actually got on at the moment. And um, if you like lagers, um, I don't know why you do, but uh, no, I, I believe we have Stella Artois on draft as well. I think it's is it Helen's Lager. I think that's the new one that we've we've now looked into getting. Um, and then ciders again, Suffolk with um, with Aspals. Um, so we have Aspals on 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 draft, um, and then obviously with many other sort of bottled brands, Spitfire, Old Speckled Hen. Um, and Magnus, Bournemouth and that sort of thing. Okay, and, and Barry Hall has asked, is it true that um, some of the balcony cabins have restricted views? Yeah, not many of them, but um, we always stipulate which ones. So you'd never phone up and book and not be told. It's within our contract to always notify you if you are booking a balcony with a restricted view, as it is if you're booking a cabin that potentially may be sort of fairly close to an engine. It would flag up as noise and vibrating, and uh, we would always notify you of that. So then we would obviously look for an um, alternative options. But to be honest with you, um, it is sometimes it can. We have three different um, uh, sort of. We have one that's partially viewed up to thirty three percent that restricted. Then we have restricted view, which is between thirty four and sixty six percent, and then we have fully restricted, which is yeah, you're fully restricted, so sixty seven percent to one hundred percent. But actually, the beauty of it is now everything is, is virtual. Um, if you go onto our website, um, at the time of booking, if you're over the phone with one of our consultants, they can actually, it's, it's a thing called full picture, they'll be able to um, show you at the time on the website, and they can actually share pictures with you virtually, so they'll be able to show you how much instruction it is. Uh, well. So certainly don't be put, be put off by that. And Anessa's has um, also asked about your staff demographics, you know, the ratio of different countries that you have. I'm not sure if you've got a split. Um, yeah, so from my time on board, we used to have anywhere close to like 19, 19 nations, really. The um, majority of which are from the Philippines. Um, I've got loads and loads of friends from, from the Philippines, but the majority are from the Philippines. Um, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, India, um, Eastern European crew as well. We have many officers who are Eastern Europeans as well. Um, and then obviously some Brits, Brits as well. Okay, and he's also asked, which flag do the ships carry? Um, so um, the Bahamas, yeah, the Bahamas. So they're registered in um, uh, uh, Bermuda. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word then. Yeah, Bermuda. Okay. And we've so, also yeah. had a question: Are staff gratuities included in the price? Yeah, well, they're not. Um, so they are recommended at uh, five pounds per person per night, um, but it's free to add on, or you can remove them. So. Um, 
we, we initially didn't have them within the pricing structure. So you, you could just tip as, you know, back in the old school, when I, when I used to work on board, people used to get a brown envelope and just pop in sort of 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 pounds, whatever. Um, but now you do have the option to actually add, um, add it to at the time of booking. So it's five pounds per person per night. That automatically gets added on and you've got to worry. Um, or you can choose not to, you know, some people do, and that's entirely up to them. So, yeah, it's, it's really flexible. Um, but I know certainly other cruise lines just add them on and, and you have to pay them with, with us, you don't. And, and talking about some of the future cruises, Andrew Mackworth has asked, do, do passengers need to have the COVID vaccine? Um, not at this moment in time, and I say not at this moment in time, because I know that a lot of cruise lines have come out with the board saying that you have to have um, a COVID vaccine or a passport, as they're now billing it. Um, not at this moment in time. We don't stipulate that you do, um, for the simple reason that the majority of our passengers will have. Um, but also, we are going to be led by the ports of call. So if, obviously, at the moment, it's the traffic light system, which we have to adhere to, um, there's, there's various stages within cruising um, that we have to get to in order to be able to do international cruises. So at the moment, as I mentioned, it's British cruises as well as scenic cruising, so sailing up to parts of um, Iceland. That's going to be reviewed later on this month, um, all being well and good. Um, then we'll start to do cruises around Europe and, and slightly further afield, and then it goes into, um, into international um and international cruising and fly cruising. Um, so at, at this moment, we we don't say, but my personal expectations, I'd imagine that a lot of ports of call will require it um, because just simply that's the way of the world at the moment, but not at this moment in time. And, but I assume you'll, you'll actually temperature check every guest before they embark. Correct. Again, um, just going um, back to the presentation, obviously our, our protocols haven't been released yet, but there is a lot of talk that, yeah, you will get sent um, uh, you know, a test direct to you um, and you'll have to do that testing before you go on board and also uh, various stages on board as well and different ports of call may, may require it as well. So, yeah, very much so. Okay, and, and Barry's asked again if um, the make of the passengers is all, are all British? The majority are, yeah, but we also have a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of Norwegian guests, which is the Fred Olsen, um, you know, being from Norway. Um, we, we have quite a few Danish guests, um, Dutch guests. Um, we've had some Asian guests on before as well. So, but primarily we cater for the British market. Okay. And I think that's all the questions for this evening. And now I'll call upon Roger to do the vote of thanks. Yeah, Jamie, um, well done. It was a very, very entertaining and uh, informative trip through uh, the Fred Olsen world. Um, great, great view into, into the ships and, and the destinations and, and also the Fred Olsen ethos. I was a bit concerned with you, you um, touting the, the complimentary drinks package to this audience. Uh, it's <laughs> one way to get to bankruptcy, uh, in my view. But then you did redeem yourself by uh, by not allowing Acer and Poker on board, so he could he could win all his his, his cruise fees back in in poker winnings. Um, great great to hear about um, the places you go, how you get there, the boats that you have. Um, really enjoyed it. I mean, and and as they say about cruising, I wasn't seasick once. Um, so. Great talk. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And I'd like everybody uh, to unmute yourselves and express your appreciation. Thank you very much, Jamie. Thank you. Good to see everyone. Wait a bit. We'll see you all at the next 41 Club Connects evening event. Thanks very much. Thank you very Thank much, you. everyone. Yeah. Good evening. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Jane.